I'm Angelique Roche, and I am extremely excited to bring together, to bring to the stage our next guest, actor, musician, you know, he, he might, might play an archangel, I think, on a, on a little show called Lucifer, Tom Ellis! Hello. Good morning, Chicago. I don't, I don't know if he believed you. It, it, could, we're gonna try this again. Is it a good morning, Chicago? That's better. They're here there for you. There we are. They're here for you. Here well, for you. thank you. Thank you for coming. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna, we're gonna jump right on in because I know everyone has a billion and one questions and so do I. Okay. So this is, the third se this is the third season over, going into the fourth season. Um, we're so, so very happy that Lucifer will be back. <laughs> so Lucifer has gone through some evolving over the last couple of seasons. Um, I, I want to say he's become a better man, but I don't think that is the right turn of phrase. <laughs> what for you has been your inspiration in playing the character, but also and how the character has evolved over the last couple of seasons? Well, that's a, that's a good question to start with. Um, so, I think when I first, when I first started on the job, um, my sort of original inspiration for it was the, was the way the character was written, actually. Um, and it was, for me, it was written in a way that reminded me of like um, an old Oscar Wilde play, or an Oscar Wilde character, or a Noel Coward character this kind of high style, foppish character. <clears throat> but also, obviously Lucifer's the bad boy and there was, a, there was loads of like Rolling Stones references and things like that in the original pilot script. <clears throat> so I kind of thought if, if Oscar Wilde had sex with Mick Jagger, that was my starting point. Uh, that was the love child. And then, so that, that's where we started. And then the, the character has just evolved because of everything that's happened around him. He's allowed himself to kind of slowly absorb humanity. And uh, without realizing, he's slowly changing himself. Uh, and I think, you know, that's pretty much what, the, what our show is about. It's, a, it's the ultimate redemption story of the most irredeemable character on a path to redemption. I'm really excited. I still can't get this image of this love child out of my head. Um, your portrayal of Lucifer has been uniquely frank, uh, and you know, no one seems to believe him. I think that's one of the best things about the show is he never really lies. He doesn't lie. He, he doesn't lie at all. He's very open about his devilishness. <laughs> what have been your inspirations in kind of reflecting being that person? Like, has there been a particular character that you feel like is sitting there screaming at the top of their lungs, like, Yes, I'm telling the truth. Why won't you believe me? <laughs> well, I mean, the, the obvious one is, is Detective. Detective Decker. Uh, detective. Um, <laughs> I mean, the, we, we spent three seasons of her just going, well, it, it can't be true, and just not believing it and not buying into it at all. And then, of course, we, we ended season three with her seeing Lucifer, who got his devil face back. And, you know, season four that we're halfway through shooting at the moment, I think is actually going to be our best season so far. Now that Chloe has that knowledge, what does she do with it? That's a great segue to my next question. <laughs> um, I, will, I will have to say that one of the hardest things about doing the questions for this joke is all the resurrection, all the, all the questions for this panel is the jokes about resurrection. Yes. It's, uh, I'm sure you get enough of them. Um, <laughs> But now that the show is, is moving forward and you are actually in the middle of production. We are. Is there anything that you can tell fans about the direction of the show? <laughs> um, well, we, I mean, so Netflix, thank you so much for picking us up. There. <clears throat> Netflix, um, Netflix really wanted to, to have Lucifer because they really loved the show that we already had. So. We've been, we've been careful about, we don't want to change our show too much because that's the show that people really liked. But there, are certain, there were certain restrictions that we had when we were on network television that meant we couldn't maybe do as much as we wanted to. And so things like my bum, 
which when uh, I was never allowed to show before. Not that people want to see it, really. So does that, does that mean that there are going to be bum shots in this new season? There may season? be some bum shots this season. I'm not going to lie. Some? That means there's going to be <laughs> multiple. Well, there you go. There will be multiple bum shots. Certainly after a scene we shot the other day. I can't fill you on on that one yet. Oh. <laughs> there are a lot of happy fans out in this audience right now. Yeah. But, you know, I also, I also want to stress, we didn't want to, it's not like, I think one of the reasons our show, people like our show is because it kind of, it doesn't go all the way there. So it's about suggestion and it's about sort of getting away with it and it's about being cheeky um, and not vulgar. And I think that we've still, we're still being careful that we're not going to go into vulgarity. It's more about um, everything's justified that we do. I like that. It's, it, but that's what makes the show so wonderful. Um, another thing that makes a show wonderful is the music. Ah. Uh. So, you are a musician. You are you are a singer. Um, you do actually sing in the show. This is true. Uh, how much do you play a role in what songs are chosen, uh, and and do you do you have kind of a hand in how that fits in the overall environment of the show? Yeah, I mean. Um I, <laughs> they hadn't planned on me singing in the show when the show first started. I mean, it was all about Lucifer having the, you know, Lux and the piano bar and all that sort of stuff. But the producers didn't know that I sang until we went out on a karaoke night uh, and got a bit drunk. And I, I, I can't remember, I think I did Mustang Sally or something. And they were like, oh my God, we have to write this. So, so you know, that's when the first song came along was the Nina Simone Cinnamon song, which they chose on my behalf. And... Um, I was like, okay, so we need to kind of make this a, sort of a screen-worthy length. Like, how much time have we got to do this? So my thing with songs now on the show is you, 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 we'll get a song, but we have to find, um, you know, a 90-second version of that song. A little bit like on X Factor, right, where the contestants do a song, but they do like an abridged version of it. Um, and my, my thing is that I always want the song to tell a story, so it has a beginning, middle, and end. So to find some kind of shape to the song in a shortened version of it. Would you be open to giving us a 90-second snippet of a song today? <laughs> oh, my Lord. Um, well, a cappella. I believe in you. You believe in me? I do. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I was just trying to think which one I could do. Uh, well, we did uh, Devil May Care, which is quite fun. No cares for me. I'm happy as I can be. I've learned to love and to live. Devil may care. No cares for those. Whatever comes and later goes. That's what I'll take and I'll give. Devil may care. When the day is young, I suffer no regrets. I know that he who frets loses the night. For only a fool thinks he can hold back the dawn. He who's wise never tries to revise what's past and gone. Thank you so much. I'm really sweating heavily now. <laughs> so one of the cool things about that is that you brought yourself to the role. And a couple of other things you brought to the role uh, and we were talking about this uh, in regards to the comics, is that you got to keep your accent, you have, you have a glorious head of brown hair, <laughs> unlike the comic books. Uh, yeah. What else do you feel like, um, how, how else are you similar to Lucifer, <laughs> Morningstar? Um, well, I mean, I think the thing is that like, it, it was kind of like, it was, it was open for interpretation, this part. So I, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to confess this, in a, in a comic book convention... It's I, safe. I didn't know when I first got this job that it was based on a comic book. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and I'm kind of, in a weird way, I'm glad I, I, I didn't know that because I think it would have affected the, my choices. My choices were based on the script I had, not on the comic book. And so I would have, like, I, I would have fretted about the fact I didn't have blonde hair. I would have been, oh, they won't get me the part. I haven't got blonde hair. Um, little did I know, once I got the job, there was a huge conversation about whether I should have blonde hair or not, <laughs> whether they should dye my hair. Um, I'm glad they didn't. Uh, 
And then I, I think as, the, as it's kind of grown and evolved, the show, like just, just different elements of, uh, of myself and Lucifer are sort of cross-pollinating, basically. So um, I love like wordplay and puns, and so does Lucifer. So many good puns. <laughs> so many good puns. It's wonderful. Pundiful. Um, <coughs> Very punny. Very punny. <laughs> I also, when I'm filming, don't see my children an awful lot, so my dad jokes just to get used on everybody. Um, and then, uh, what, what else? Juggling? I've done a bit of juggling in the show. Um, <laughs> just, you know, just the, it, it's... The weirdest thing is that for the last three and a half years, I've spent more time as Lucifer than I have as Tom. Interesting. Because of our filming schedule. So um, it's quite a difficult question to answer because the two aren't that mutually exclusive. Tom is Lucifer and Lucifer is Tom. Indeed. At least <laughs> I know you'll be honest. No, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the cool things about the show is, although at the beginning, Lucifer does not have his wings... Lucifer does eventually, multiple times, get back his wings. Um, what do you feel has been the coolest thing about the type of special effects and the type of, um, and I, and I, I want to say stunt work because I feel like there's some stunt work in the show. Yeah, there is, yeah. Um, as through the last couple of seasons, is there any like cool memorable moment or anything that you're like, oh my God, this is so cool? Well... We just, actually, we just shot something that was, I was like, oh, this is really cool. We basically, um, we shot a big fight. Uh, but the way in which we shot it was quite different to the way we've shot stuff in the past. And uh, that was really cool. We took some inspiration from various movies and, um, and, uh, and did our version of it, really. And I was like, this, this is making me look really good. <laughs> it's making me look like I know what I'm doing. Um, but no, I think like we've got we've got an amazing stunt team on the show, um, and uh, you know just the op the nicest thing for me really honestly is that I get to do something different every day I come to work. So one day I'll be beating people up in a bar, and the next day I'll be singing the piano, and then the next day I'll be, you know, telling someone that they're awful. Um, it's just you know it's a it's a it's a gift for me this job, and I'm really grateful for it. I also think one of the really interesting and cool parts of the show is um, Lucifer's family drama, to say the least. Yeah. Uh, brothers, sisters, mothers, yeah. all of the things have come into play. Uh, are we going to see some more family dynamics unfold in this new season? Um, yes. Yes, you might meet some more members of the family. More members of the family. It's a big family. I was going to say something about holidays, but it's just too soon. Um, I mean, after all, Dad is creation. So, you know, um, it's, uh, yeah, no, we are going to meet some more people this year. Um, and I think part, part of the reason why that has worked on the show is that, um, you know, we, we tell stories about celestials and humans, but the, the thing that really connects with people is when the celestials are going having very human problems um, or problems that humans recognize. So any sort of family dynamics, an embarrassing mum, you know, um, an elder brother who's like, his piety just pisses you off so much that you just want to have a go at him all the time, um, but you can't help but love. You know, it's, 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 um, it's been part of the show that I think uh, has really worked for us, actually. Will we actually find out who the favorite son actually is this season? Well, it's me, isn't it? I think mean? the audience agrees. <laughs> I think the audience agrees. It's up for debate, I think. But yes, I think it's me. Aha. <laughs> so this is my fun, my fun panel of app questions that oh we have gosh. here. So uh, the cool thing that fans get to do is fans get to ask questions for these panels. I like that he's drinking water to prepare, to prepare for this. Um, so we have a couple questions we're going to ask for here. I will also say that in a couple minutes, we are going to open up for fan questions. There's a lovely mic that's being set up right now. Don't run, be safe. Um, and so in a moment, I will, I will open up the floodgates to the folks that are here uh, at Ace Comic Con on the floor to ask some questions. This is also my favorite part of everything. I get to ask questions, but also, I, they're never nearly as good as, no, as questions. the questions from the floor. 
I know I'm nervous already. I can see them. So oh, Jess from Middlebury, Indiana, asked, you and the writers have taken on the monumental task of humanizing the story of the notorious devil. Not just the devil, the notorious devil. Do you think there is a happy ever after for him? Oh. I want there to be. I, I wonder that as well. Um, I, I hope so. I mean, obviously, lots of people would like Lucifer and Detective to eventually end up together. Um, but uh, I think, you know, there are many, many things that will conspire to, to make sure that if that does happen, it won't be yet. Oh. <laughs> But I think, you know, uh, a happy ending uh, for the story is, is something that I would like, but I, I, I'm not ready to talk about that yet. We're not ready to finish. Ooh. All right, so Alessandra from Italy asks, big fan debated question. This is in all caps, so I want to make sure that this okay. is said with the drama that it needs to be said. What is your real middle name? My real middle name is John. There you go. Um, I, I, <laughs> I think she's probably asking that question because I think on Wikipedia it says it's Paul. And I don't know why that is. It says my name is Thomas Paul Ellis and I was born in Bangor, which I wasn't, uh, a year after I was born. So <laughs> very accurate as always. I mean, at least they're going for Beatles names. I'm yeah, true. <laughs> it could be worse. Thomas John Paul Ringo. Yeah. Yeah, no. John Paul Ringo Ellis. <laughs> So Ingrid Andriana from New York, how did you go about crafting Lucifer, i.e. his voice, mannerisms, and did you influence how he dressed? Well, I, I mean, again, that comes back to my, my first feelings about what the character was. And, uh, I, you know, I have to say, like, the, the, the pilot script was written by Tom Kapanos, who, who wrote uh, Californication. And he, what he does really well is he writes writes lovable assholes, basically. <laughs> and, but everybody uh, loves a little bit of a lovable Well, exactly, one. exactly. And so uh, for me, that was the way it was written, it was like a blueprint. I, was, I sort of tapped into that side of it, the sort of high style Lucifer side of it. Um, and then we just, we just ran with it. I mean, Len Wiseman, who directed the pilot, we, we chatted a lot about you know, how, how he would dress. And I just loved the idea of him being a gentleman at all times. All times, and, uh, even when in, in a robe and a pair of boxes. Yeah, exactly. And and not, you know, we. I think we tried once for Lucifer to wear like jeans and a top, and it uh, and it felt weird. Apart from, of course, when he's trying to be um, Dushifer, um, <laughs> which is so much fun. Um, but uh, yeah, no, we tried it once, and I was like, you know what? I think it just it feels right for him to just be in a suit. Yeah. Yeah, that's his uniform. I like it. Yeah. It's very dapper. Very dapper. All right, so I have two rules uh, about coming to the mic. You have to speak into the mic, and you have to tell us your name. Hi. Hi, Barbara. Hi, Barbara. Hi. Nice to see you again. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm all over Facebook because of you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I feel like there's a story behind this. I don't know what that means, but <laughs> I'm glad. Well, my question is, will we send, see more of um, you and Chloe having nice little smooch scenes? Oh. <laughs> Smoochy? Without a phone interrupting. <laughs> <laughs> Those bloody phones. Um, <clears throat> um, possibly. Possibly. I mean, uh, the, what I would say about Lucifer and Chloe's relationship is that this, this season really kind of um, focuses on that because obviously there's been a big dynamic shift in that, in that relationship. So um, first of all, we need to find out whether Chloe can accept that he's the actual devil. She will. <laughs> Before she starts smooching. <laughs> does that answer your question, Bob? It certainly does, and uh, thank you so much. Thank you, my love. I mean, didn't Chloe say no matter what? Well, yeah, she said that. <laughs> People say a lot of things. People do say a lot of things. <laughs> Next question. Hi, my Hi. name's Melissa. Hi, Melissa. Um, I'm an Outlander fan and a Lucifer fan. 
Um, so on Twitter, there seems to be this little bromance going on between you and Sam Hewen, and I just wondered if you could speak to that because you know, <laughs> well, some of us have lusted after okay. less is wrong. It's I'll feel, I'll politically feel you. incorrect. <laughs> but, <laughs> I feel it. So Sam and I went to drama school together. Okay. So I've known Sam for a long, long time. Um, and then uh, we've just kind of, we've uh, just sort of connected again a little bit on Twitter. But I just was, no, I was complimenting on him on his, um, on his new barber campaign because he right. looks very handsome. And he does. I mean, I can't deny it. You need a contract. I mean, we, we used to call him Handsome Sam at college. I'd believe it. What was your nickname? Oh, sorry, that was two questions. <laughs> <laughs> See, I have, I'm not flashing you, I'm just showing you my shirt. <laughs> she hasn't got a t-shirt on for people I behind her. Have a nothing on. under it, nothing. Wow. Uh, Are we still looking at my t-shirt? No. Yes. <laughs> I am. Thank, Thank you. you so much. <laughs> How do I follow this? Hi, I'm Lori. Hey, Lori. Um, so my question is, um, thought about it today. Are we gonna, at some point in this series, hear from your dad or maybe see your dad, like we saw Cain and Abel and your mom? Is your dad gonna like some make an appearance or? Well, possibly. We did. I mean, he's made an appearance as a narrator because there was an episode that we did that was directed by uh, Kevin Alejandro. It was one of our standalone episodes, and uh, it was it was the episode where we mused what happened if Chloe and Lucifer didn't meet the way that they met. So, um, so Neil Gaiman, who wrote the comics that, that I now know <laughs> exist, um, uh, he played God. Neil was the voice of God on the show. So if that means when we actually see God, is it going to be Neil Gaiman? That's a question for Neil. Ooh. But I, I've heard he quite likes to be on screen, actually. <laughs> and he has a lovely voice. Yeah, he's also a really lovely... I met him for the first time, actually, at Comic-Con, the last Comic-Con, and he's just a really nice man. Aww. I know. So hopefully he will be my dad. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right. Hello. Hi, I'm Gabe. Uh, I have a really quick question, all right? Um, what do you desire? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, uh, right, okay, so I hate getting political but it's very difficult not to these days. Um, I desire uh, some kind human beings to be in charge of our world. Oh. That's what I desire. People who think about people. Anyway, sorry, there you go. Hi, I'm Sindra, I'm from Norway originally. Hi. And I would just wanna say, Rush was canceled way too soon. I agree. <laughs> And I just wondered, kind of a spin-up on that, if you had Lucifer's ability to make people say their desires, what would you do with it? Uh, <laughs> I'd probably go to the White House, actually. <laughs> Again. Um, no, I'd, I'd, I'd do this, I'd, I would go and, I'd go around and ask people what their desires are. I wouldn't be able to m fulfill them. <laughs> Whatever. But I could do that. I mean, honestly, if I was going to have any of Lucifer's superpowers, it would be his liver. <laughs> he enough. does have a rather formidable liver. He's got an incredible liver. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Sorry. My name's Krista. Hi, Krista. I just want to say I love you. Oh, thank you. I love you too. <laughs> um, the show is wonderful. The, ca the uh, cast is great too. Could you talk about maybe a funniest moment you had behind the scenes? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, we laugh a lot. We do laugh a lot. I mean, Lauren German is literally one of the funniest people I've met in my life. She is hilarious and she's always got the crew in stitches. Um, but. Uh, uh, as, a, as a general rule, when we've got a really great cast of funny people, Rachel Harris is the one that makes me laugh probably, you know, the most when she does certain little things. But there was one scene that me, Rachel, and Lauren were shooting in a car, uh, in, uh, in the police car, and Rachel was in the back. And we were lining up the shot, me and Lauren in the front, Rachel in the back. And the, the, uh, the camera operator said, Rachel, can you just move to your left a little bit? And as she moved she let out a really loud fart. 
And me and Lauren were like that, and we both went, was that? And Rachel, without, without a drop in a beat, we went, was that? And she went, yep. <laughs> yep, yep it was. And, um, and then we kept, the, the camera kept rolling, but we, we couldn't do the scene, because we were just, like, crying. Well, thank you. Because it was really smelly as well. <laughs> Oh dear. Anyway. <laughs> I like your t-shirt. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, hi, my name is Lakota. I'm from Wisconsin. It's my first Comic Con and I fuck kids, so it's awesome to be here. Cool. Um, my question to you is, damn, I lost it. <laughs> Keep calm and don't blink. Okay. <laughs> um, First of all, I do have to say that you absolutely personify Lucifer. You are awesome, so I really appreciate that. Thank you. And then, since I can't think of my question, could you just say hi to my cousin Tanya, who couldn't <laughs> be here? So hi to your cousin Tanya? Yes. Hi, Tanya. I'm so sorry you can't be here. Um, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. But your cousin's got great questions. <laughs> <laughs> hi. Hi. My name's Cherish. Um, I was wondering, what was your favorite episode to film and why? Uh, oh, gosh. I've got, I mean, there's lots of favorite episodes. I think the one that I always think about is um, in season one, we did an episode called A Priest Walks Into a Bar. And uh, it, we had um, the amazing Coleman Domingo playing Father Frank. And uh, I, I loved it for lots of reasons, that episode. But there was one scene in particular where, obviously, he's a priest and I'm the devil. And I... I don't think very highly of him. And then he starts playing the piano, and we start having this piano duel, and it's this kind of moment of connection through music. And it was honestly one of the most joyful experiences I've ever had on a set, because we just played this scene out on one shot, and, and Coleman was just so much fun to play with, so I'll never forget that. Oh. Hi. Hello. I'm Susan. Hi, Susan. Um, I know that your family is a family of pastors, so... <laughs> True story. <laughs> oh, the irony. So, now that we love Lucifer so much, does your family love Lucifer also? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, yes, actually. I mean, the ni I have to say that, yes, I am from a... Uh, my dad was a pastor, my uncle, and my, my elder sister is now a pastor as well. Um, I, uh, you know, I grew up in a, in, a, in, a, in, in a Christianity that was about, like, love, acceptance, tolerance, you know, understanding, kindness, and all the good parts of, of that. And, um, and I think that people that have that kind of faith are able to see beyond what this, the name of this show is. And the, the most satisfying responses or, uh, you know, notes that I get from people are from, from people of faith who enjoy the show. And they enjoy the show for what it is. Um, and they think that it's, in, you know, it's great that we talk about angels and, and demons and God and all those things because there are, whether you believe or not, there, are, you know, there, there is an effect from thinking about those things, thinking about good and bad and, and taking responsibility for our own actions rather than palming them off to some sort of mythical creature. You know, I, I, I think it's some... Um, it brings a lot of healthy debate to all of it. So, I, I, you know, my family love it for what it is. And I think, you know, we've taken a character to tell a story. And that's, that's all we've done. We've not, like, we're not, we're not out there to, like, offend people. And if people get offended by it, then I think that that says a lot more about those people than it does about our show. Hi, Tom. Hello. My name's Varun. Rune? Um, yeah, close <laughs> I, I, I pronounced it totally wrong, don't you? What was it? What's your name? Varun. Varun? V-A-R-U-N. Varun. Got right, it. got that um, clear. So my question is, if you could use Lucifer's personality and be a character in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, who would you be? In the Marvel Universe? Oh, good Lord. Um, <laughs> it's a very big universe. It's a huge universe. Um, who would I be? I mean... Doctor Strange, maybe? Although I think Benedict's got that covered, hasn't he? Yeah. I 
think you could still be a good Doctor yeah? Strange. Do you think? I can see that, yeah. I'll, tell, I'll email him. I'll tell him. Hey. My name is Erin. Uh, but I normally I will be nervous, but ever since yesterday I feel nothing but calmness right now. <laughs> what happened yesterday? Um, yesterday I uh, I was at the um, Chris Pine, uh, Lee Pace, and Karen Gillan panel, and I had brought up the fact that I had an anxiety attack earlier this week, and. It almost cost me not to be here, but I was well enough to actually come. And ever since then, everybody's just been so supportive. They've been, while I was walking back, everybody was just hugging me and telling me how proud they were. Like, complete strangers, like, just coming up to me. And Aww. I felt nothing but love here. Like, that that's what it was yesterday. That and is amazing. I just felt so, I felt so proud. So today, that nervousness just went away. Now I'm here, and now Good for I'm, you. I'm okay. But uh, I am a huge Smallville fan, so I was hype as hell when Tom Welling came on the show. Um, since you guys are both named Tom, what was, what did you, did anyone get you confu confused you two? <laughs> did anybody accidentally call you um, Clark Kent? <laughs> Only when I'm wearing these. Yeah. Um, no, uh, we're, we were, there's quite a few Toms on the set already because our, our director of photography is called Tom as well. So it was very confusing. So um, I, I, I took Tom, the original Tom. He became T-dubs. <laughs> True story. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and Tommy C is our other guy. But yeah, it was a bit confusing. But it was lovely that we had another Tom who was six foot three with dark hair. <laughs> Thank you, my love. I hope you have a great rest of your weekend as well. Hi, my Hello, name sir. is Jesse. It's more of a request. Could you say hi to my friend Angela? Is she inside your phone? Yes, yes she is. <laughs> Angela, hello. I hope you get out of there soon. It looks a bit cramped. <laughs> Thank you so much. No worries. All right, so I have good news and bad news. We have three more questions. And the reason why I say that is you need to make these questions good because there's a lot of people behind you that are very jealous. Okay. <laughs> uh, hi, Tom. My hi. Name's, my name's Allison. Hi. Um, so my, I love you on Miranda, um, and I also love you on Lucifer. Um, <laughs> But uh, so my question is, um, if you could have any um, like famous musician guest star on uh, Lucifer that like you could perform with, who would it be? Oh, gosh. Uh, well, I mean, obviously, I can't now, but David Bowie would have been amazing. Because, um, you know, Bowie was the original inspiration for the Lucifer artwork and the Lucifer comics. And also, we used a lot of Bowie like in the pilot, and that's kind of... Uh, so, unfortunately, we can't do that. But these days, I mean, do you know who I really like watching live is Bruno Mars. As I think him and his band, when they get in their moves together, and stuff, he's brilliant. So that would be a lot of fun to do, uh, Bruno Mars to come on the show, and we do a little number together. That would actually be a brilliant musical episode. That'd be great, wouldn't it? Mm. I love that. Hi, Tom. I'm Hello. Alyssa. Hi. I've noticed for the past three seasons you haven't brought up your half-brother. Jesus. Is that on purpose? Have you, I mean, has that been a taboo subject? <laughs> yeah, well, no, we don't talk about the black sheep of the family. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, <clears throat> what, we've, what we have to be careful, and we've always had to be careful with, is that we based it on the comic book and not the big book. So, you know, I think we, we were wise to do that. And I think it would be unwise to start incorporating, for example, that. Incorporating the Jesus character into it. Because it's just, you know, we don't want to offend people. And, we, you know, there's certain ways that you can go and... Uh, but I think it just wouldn't... It, I don't think it would benefit us to do that. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Tom. My name is Kelsey. Hi, Kelsey. Um, my question is musical. I know you are a musician yourself. Um, music for me is a great passion. It's connecting on so many different levels um, for so many different people with different abilities. 
So I was wondering if you have a favorite song lyric or favorite song that kind of helps you get through tough times. Helps me get through tough times. Um, there was, there's a, a, a British singer-songwriter called Tom Baxter. We, you probably won't have heard of him, but he, he wrote a song called My Declaration um, that I listen to a lot, actually, when I'm kind of not in a good place. Because uh, it's about sort of being good to yourself and about how you're going to learn from what you, your mistakes that you've made, basically. Um, but honestly, with, when it comes to music, I listen to everything. Uh, I just, I love music. And sometimes I, I'll sit and listen to, like, you know, Tchaikovsky's Fifth Symphony because it kind of makes me feel it's something. It's beautiful. It's beautiful, exactly, and it's gorgeous. And I used to play, like, in orchestras and stuff when I was growing up, so that's a big part of my life. Um, but, yeah, no, I, I just, um, all sorts of music, really. Uh, I, I love listening to that Tom Baxter song. All right, I'll look that up. Thank you. No worries. So I love finishing off conversations with a couple of questions. You look so menacing. <laughs> I'm like, meh. No, I'm, uh, uh, actually, that was a great question. That was actually one of the questions I was going to ask. She did my job for me. It was amazing. Uh, but you have inspired so many folks. Like, this show has made a really big impact. Who are some of your inspirations and superheroes that are in your life? Of my own life? Um, well, my dad, <laughs> you know, which is an obvious answer. But I think, but I, I you know, he kind of, um, he's someone I really looked up to when I was growing up as, and, and respected as someone who... Uh, people really responded to as a human um, for the right reasons. Um, and then, you know, my old drama teacher from school, uh, who was the person that convinced my parents that I should be an actor. And we're still really good friends now, and I see her all the time. Uh, and, you know, from an acting point of view, my sort of heroes when I was growing up, and still my, my biggest kind of acting hero now, I would say, is probably Tom Hanks. Because I just, I, I, you know, I love... I, uh, I love everything that he's done, but there's something wonderfully, he's got this wonderful childlike quality inside of him. And I think all my favorite actors, when I think about it, have got this kind of child inside of them. And um, that's what I kind of like really tap into. Because I've got a child in me as well. I'm basically 10 years old in the body of a 40 year old. We know you're in the middle of production. So you were busy, but is, are there any things that you're reading right now, any things that you're watching or have watched lately that you're just like, this is amazing? Um, well, a cut, there was a couple of shows, actually, that, I've, that came out of the UK. One called um, Fleabag, which is one of the funniest things I've seen for quite some time. Uh, and then Happy Valley, which is this brilliant drama that was on the BBC. It was, it was, it was wasn't it brilliant? It was just amazingly written. Um, to, you know, to, to be in something that has that kind of rich writing would be, would be a, you know, something for me. And also, I love the theatre, and I started in the theatre, and I will always go back to it. So I want to go and do something there, and maybe a musical would be fun on Broadway. That would be fun. Speak it into existence. Exactly. <laughs> so you've already played a character out of a comic book. If you could play any superhero... Besides, obviously, who Lucifer has become a superhero to many, who would it be? I mean, I think when I was growing up, it was always Superman. You know, I was like, just the notion of being able to fly for me, and that's like the most amazing superpower to have. Um, but no, I think, yeah, Superman. Well, thank you so <laughs> very much. Thank you. Can we get a round of applause for Tom Ellis?